One of the great privileges that I experience in life is getting to talk to hurting people. And I enjoy just being a voice, being a listening ear. And when I'm talking to people trying to maybe assess where they're at, one of the most painful statements that I hear, I hear it quite often, and when I hear it, my heart winces because I know what's coming. And it's the conversation where I say, so tell me you know, a little bit about your story, or tell me why things are, are so messed up, or how did you get to where you're at, right? There just comes that moment where I'll say, tell me a little bit about where you're at, or why you're stuck, or what's going on, or, or why you're feeling such intense emotion. And it's when a couple or a spouse says this to me, they say, you know, we tried to do repair work ourselves. And it just is a punch in the gut because it just really never works. The concept of we tried to do recovery work ourselves usually, quite honestly, causes more damage, causes more harm, more confusion, and a couple can end up incredibly disoriented because they had no plan, no curriculum, no process. They were just kind of full of intention and effort, and it just got chaotically out of control. And typically when they're on the other side of, we tried to do it ourselves, they're exhausted, they're frustrated, they're hopeless, and they're very cynical as well. What also ends up happening is they do more damage. And one of the key components, in fact, it's part of our vision statement at AffairRecovery.com. It is one of the core tenets of my own work. It's one of the core values that we have as an organization, as an individual, as a marriage with Samantha and I, is the concept and the idea of doing no more harm to an individual or a couple that is in crisis. It's a key value for Samantha and I to do no more harm to each other when we're fighting or in a disagreement about anything in life, let alone infidelity. It's a component that Affair Recovery holds as one of the highest standards of what we do, and that is to do no more harm. You don't need any more harm done to you. You're in enough pain. Your marriage doesn't need any more collateral damage. You've already experienced one of the most devastating, if not the most devastating wreckage that you could ever face. You don't need any more harm. And you as an individual, you as a couple trying to find your way out of this mess, don't need any more harm. But why would you want to try and do it yourself? Why would you think that you have the answers as an unfaithful spouse, for example, why would you think that you have the answers when you're the one that has brought this devastation into your relationship? I don't mean to be rude or trite. If you've watched enough of my videos, I certainly, just as I've already alluded to, would not want to do any more harm. But let me ask you, what qualifies you to be able to have the answers to this life-changing traumatic event that has transpired? You may think, well, I know my spouse better than anybody, so I have the answers. Well, if you're an unfaithful, I'll tell you, you didn't know enough to prevent this from happening to yourself or your spouse. Why do you seemingly now have the answers? If you're a betrayed, I would say, well, unfortunately, your spouse has gone outside the relationship, and so the person that you thought you were in a relationship with has a whole other side to them that you didn't see coming. So to think that you're going to have the answers to this is unfortunately incredibly ambitious and I will say this with great mercy and great compassion, it is naive to think that you can fix yourselves. It is like a surgeon operating upon themselves. They simply don't. There cannot be the answers to your devastation by your own wisdom, by your own ability to fix things. It just doesn't work. There are a few cop-outs that people use I hear them all the time. I'll give you some examples. It's not exhaustive, but some of the common few that I hear. Number one is, you know what? These sorts of people are just out for money. And look, I get it. There's some organizations 
that would try and capitalize upon the frailty and the devastation and the absolute helplessness that a couple or an individual feels. If you watch more than one video, if you go to affairrecovery.com and look at the free resources alone, you'll see it's absolutely not who we are. And I can tell you that oftentimes that is a cop-out by an unfaithful spouse because number one, they don't want to accept what's happened. Number two, they don't want to have to work through the shame, the uncomfortability, the pain. Number three, they'd rather live in denial. Number four, they are looking for a way out of having to take responsibility. Number five, they may have experienced something like that where people took advantage of them, and I get that. The reality is, more times than not, it's a cop-out, not a true justifying reason to not get help. Another cop-out is, well, this kind of help should be free. I'm sorry, this is some of the highest level help for some of the highest level trauma and there isn't going to be just free help. Now, we do have a free boot camp that's exceptional. These videos are free. There's lots of resources at affairrecovery.com that are absolutely free. There's lots of sites out there that do provide some free help. But there comes a point in your own recovery, you have to go above and beyond free help. And I'm sorry, if you want a therapist or an expert that knows what they are doing, that can help you, you can't expect that those level of people or professionals work for free. And I know, I'm very familiar with debt consolidation and debt management. I've been in debt and been on the brink of bankruptcy at least twice in the last 30 years. I completely understand that. However, if there was ever a reason for you to go into some debt, it would be to save your relationship. If there was ever a reason to consider swiping the card a few times, it would be to try and save the most important relationship in your life. And if you come from faith, certainly I respect your relationship with God or Christ or what have you. But besides that, this is probably, hopefully, the most important relationship in your life. And if there was ever a reason to consider, you know what, we're going to have to go into some debt and we'll worry about it later, but this relationship is essential and needs a financial investment. Another cop-out is, well, we're just so busy. Man, if you're too busy to work on this relationship, something's wrong. You are, and I mean this graciously, too busy because you're gonna wake up one day and there's going to be, in the wake of your relationship or marriage, shattered dreams, maybe shattered children's lives, or self-esteem, and you name it, you must prioritize your recovery work. There are several people who watch these videos or go onto our website who are out of the country and continuously will say, look, we can't find good help in our country. I get it. That's why it's so important to watch videos like this. Read books, go to our website, use other websites as best you can, and use those sites as guides to your recovery, guides to your healing. To think that you can, on your own, suck it up and save your spouse or fix your spouse or expect your spouse to fix you is ambitious thinking and opens up the door to all kinds of crazy things that can happen to you. Let me sum up just a few pitfalls that we fall into. I would say that most of this is for the unfaithful, but some betrayed fall into these categories as well. Number one is we, unfaithful, sometimes betrayed, want a shortcut. Man, we just, we want to stick our head in the sand. We want to just wait till the storm blows over. We kind of want to live in denial. We just want a shortcut through it. We just, we don't want to have to do any repair work to repair the damage that we have done. We just want to get to the new marriage or the new relationship or the new sex life or what have you. We just want to jump to the end and healing doesn't work that way. There are no shortcuts. Until you can own that, you're going to stay stuck. You're going to stay unhappy and then eventually you're going to have to hold up that mirror and realize you're the reason that you're still stuck because you keep hoping for a shortcut that does not exist. Next, 
And this is probably one of the most sensitive pitfalls that we fall into is that we want to minimize the effect of the damage that either our choices have done to our spouse or we want to minimize the effect of the damage upon ourselves. Man, we've got young kids, right? We've got a life, we've got a job, we've got to do all these things. So we stuff it down, we minimize it, we try and put it in a box and close the lid and think, I'll worry about it later. Trauma doesn't work that way. Trauma says, oh, yeah, put me in the box. Okay, hold on. What's the, what's the worst possible moment that I could come out of this box? There it is. I'm coming out and I'm never going to go back in. Listen, it doesn't work that way. And if you're an unfaithful, as long as you continue to minimize the effect of your choices, your spouse doesn't feel safe and you're never going to be able to gain the momentum that you so desperately want. Trying to minimize the effect of what you've done and just kind of do it all yourself and just think that you can, by sheer willpower and commitment, try and be the Navy SEAL of repair work, I promise you, reveals that you have a significant blind spot to the effect of the damage that you have brought upon your family and your spouse. And the best thing that you can do is admit that you don't have the answers and that you can't do it yourself and to get expert help involved. Another pitfall that we fall into is we get scared, unfaithful, and betrayed, and we hope that the other person is going to bring it up. We hope that the other spouse or other partner is going to lead recovery. And that's true for both sides of the equation. And as long as we do that, we let another person either prioritize or misprioritize our healing. We never want to put our healing in the hands of another individual. As long as we sit back and hope that they will take responsibility. And I really understand that in some cultures this is very tough. Because in some cultures you can feel demeaned and degraded. You can feel as though you're not a priority and you don't have a right. In some theologies you can feel that you don't have a right to raise these questions or enforce these boundaries or even draw these boundaries. And I want to humbly appeal to you to prioritize your healing, to prioritize your boundaries that must be respected. I want to challenge you to understand that you don't have to sit back and wait for your spouse or partner to prioritize repair work. You have the right, you have the dignity and the respect as a human being to prioritize your healing and your recovery work and your future. You see, to think that we can heal ourselves with this level of trauma reveals the fact that we have some significant blind spots. It reveals the fact that we still are wrestling with pride and an inability to accept help and insight from other people. If you've been hurt by therapists, professionals, or authority figures in the past, I respect that. I would encourage you to begin to pursue healing from that. Perhaps it's time for some grief regarding that abuse and then some forgiveness regarding that abuse and then some extra care into voices that you allow into your life on an authority level. If you haven't suffered abuse from that and you simply are kind of like, man, I, I thought that we could do this ourselves, I want to graciously invite you to let go of that belief and reach out for expert help as soon as possible. I promise you, you will not be sorry.